Exponential functions are, you know, you've seen them on graphs. They basically look like this. They're things that grow out of control exponentially, you know, and you'd like to think that your bank account is growing exponentially. Probably not. I mean, I'd like to think my viewership of my videos is growing exponentially. I mean, I'm not that cool, so let's just not hold out for that. But you get the point. It's something that grows exponentially. And this is what the equation looks like. It looks like this. You always have these two constants, and this constant is raised to the x value. This is not an exponential function. And a lot of people, when you first look at it, you're like, well, x to the third, there is an exponent, so exponential function. The x, the input value, the x, has to be in the exponent for it to be exponential. And what matters is, as you'll see, is that these two guys right here, um, it, they will tell you this is basically the factor of growth here. And a has no impact on it. So if you had something like 2 to the x, right? That means every single term is multiplied by 2. And we'll see when we see a table of values. Putting a 5 in front of it, or a 10, or a 3, or a half, that just changes how steep this sucker grows, right? So uh, the bigger this a value, the bigger the a value, the steeper it becomes. If this was like one fifth or the lower the a value, the, the kind of wider sweeping it would be. So a has an impact on these exponential functions that way, how steep the curve is. Um, so now let's look at a few problems, right? One thing that's super common is they'll say, they'll give you a table of values and they'll ask you if that is an exponential function or not. So they'll be like, okay, we'll see here. here oops, here's a table. And they'll say, okay, one, two, three, four, right? And you'll have three, six, 12, and 24. And you're looking at it and you're like, I mean, kind of looks exponential. I don't really know. I mean, it's going up pretty fast. It could be a linear. Is it exponential? Here's the rule. You find out the multiple between each two. Three times what is six? You'll see it's times two. Six times what is 12? Oh, pattern. 12 times what is 24? If every term is growing by a multiple of the same number, then you know that yes, that is, yes, an exponential function. Not only that, you also know that two is your base being raised to the x value. So, okay, let's look at another one. Uh, you know, it's annoying because in all these examples, it's like the first one is, and the next one probably won't be. I'm gonna be that guy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow that pattern. Okay, so here's another one, two, three, four, and it's like two, four, six, like 10. So you're like, two times what is four? times two. Oh, maybe it's times two every time. Four times two is not six. Like, I don't even know what that is. That's definitely not two. And six times two is not, this is not the same pattern. This is not exponential. All right. So that's how you can determine right away whether or not they are based on a table of values. Now, one of the easiest things is they'll say like, okay, so if this is your exponential function, we'll say four to the x, evaluate this if x equals two, you just plug that sucker in. Right? Evaluating this exponential function for x is 2, well, that's easy. 4 is 2, not 8. I know that some of you do that. It's 16. Okay. You thought that was easy. What about this one? Are you ready? This is a curveball. What if your exponential function looks lame like this, right, to the x? And they say evaluate this function for x equals negative 4. Would that be stressful? You just say 1 half to the negative 4 value. Here's a question. Do you remember what happens when you have a negative exponent? Last video that was made, you reflipricate this sucker. It's the refliprical. So this is 2 over 1 to the positive fourth. 2 to the fourth is 16, I think. And that would be your answer. All right. A little bit more complicated, but not really. What if they gave you a table of values and they said, from this table of values, find me the actual equation for the exponential function, right? So let, let's see, let, let's say they gave you a table like this, x, y, and it was 0, 1, 2, 3, and you had 2, 6, 18. Let's just get rid of the 3. That's too much, too much math for right now. Well, I would start with what I know is that every exponential equation is this. y equals a, b to the x, right? I don't know what any of those values are. I don't know what a and b are yet, but I know that that's like the generic formula for the equation of an exponential function. The cool thing is, is this looks like it's times three, times three. So I know my constant of growth there is three. So at least I know b right now. y equals a three to the x. Remember, whatever it's being multiplied every time goes into this sucker here. Yeah, but that's not cool because I still don't know my a. So we're not done. I don't know what the equation of this thing is. 
What if I had an x and a y value to plug in? Could I then solve for a? Here's x and y values all day, x, y, x, y, x, y. Let's pick this one here, or this one here. It doesn't matter. I guess I'll pick the first one. x, y, 2 is my y, a times 0, well, hold, yeah, excuse me, 3 to the x is 0, OK? What's 3 to the 0? What's anything to the 0? It's always 1, 2 equals a times 1. In other words, a is 2. So I can put my 2 in here. Now I'm totally done. y equals 2, 3 to the x. That was exciting. That was fun. So that's how you would find the equation of your exponential function given some, some table values. Find this constant, put it in for b, then solve backwards for a using a point, plugging in a point and solving for a. And so that's pretty much the gist of exponential functions. You know, in real life, they're very common. Bacterial growth or whatever, compound interest. Um, but that's how you do it algebraically. And it does make sense as long as there's this, it's being multiplied by the same value every time. And remember, if you're having a hard time at your local high school in this uh, class, take it online at Silicon Valley High School. Pass it there and the credits will be transferred back to you.